This is the pebble line judgment test. In this test you see two lines and you have to decide which is longer. It's a really simple task and it's an implementation that's not too different than one that's been around uh, since the 1850s. So let's just look at a couple trials. Um, this is the basic test. Those were practice trials we just saw. The um, lines are about 100 pixels long and <coughs> we have to decide which one's longer by hitting the right or left shift key and the differences are usually up to 10 pixels so um, between 1 and 10 pixels and there uh, there's a little jitter so the lines are either a little left or right of where they are on previous trials and up and down a little bit so that you can't use sort of like a single um, point on the pixel screen to judge what, which one's larger. Um, so this this is the basic task. The you, you can see it had a deadline, and it used um, it used lines of different lengths. So um, uh, some of the history of this task uh, it was used a lot by a professor who eventually settled at Wisconsin named Vivian Allen Charles Henman. Henman was credited for discovering, um, using this line task to discover that the bigger the difference in lines, the longer it took to respond. And also he did um, stuff in 1911 with the speed actually trade-off and showed that um, the responses that were more confident were more accurate and um, faster. So here's one of his papers um, from 1906 and time as a perception of measures of different sensations. And this covered a lot of different things, um, color, pairs of colors, color blindness, but he has a whole section on linear magnitudes. And here is where he describes um, both the different, how differences in length of lines and um, things like that impact the timing. And generally he was looking at, you know, 10 millimeters versus 10 and a half, 11. So that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25% differences. And so people can judge those pretty quickly. And so as you have them um, speed up, you, could, you might expect them to be more and more accurate. He later did um, a study called, that was more about line judgments per se, uh, in general, the relationship of the time of judgments to, to its accuracy. And here he had people um, judge uh, after making, well, four people, probably including him, H. <coughs> they said, are you really confident or are you not very confident? So they have four confidence um, levels. Here's our accuracy across confidence levels. So people can accurately judge when they're not confident that they're probably guessing. And when they're very confident, they're very accurate. And the same categories are here for both correct and incorrect across three different subjects. And as you get more confident, your speed is also faster. So 750 milliseconds to 1600 milliseconds and so on. So he invented confidence ratings, speed actually trade-off, and um, something about, uh, something about um, timing related to the difference of discrimination. Now he this task he was doing this around 1911. He uh, he actually was cited people who'd been doing back since the 19 since the 1850s, including Weber and Fechner, who used the same task in the 1850s and 1860s to um, describe their psychophysical laws. And basically, the idea would be the accuracy or the time needed to make a discrimination um, depended proportionally on the difference. And let me see if we can find where he discusses this. He cites, uh, I think it's in this paper. He cites Weber. Hegelmeyer also um, did this, I think, as memory, as a memory task. And there's a rec more recent paper, maybe in the last 20 years, that describes Hegelmeyer's um, contribution here, but really this is a task that goes back to the beginning of psychophysics, and they note that 
to one to two percent differences can be detected um, and oftentimes people are making judgments that are five to ten percent differences so I decided to implement this for pebble and it will be if, if it's not in the one you can download right now it'll be in the one the final version of pebble 2.0 in the test battery under line judgment and <coughs> there's a number of options you can use here um, so um, one of the things uh, so I wanted to be able to look at both both of these phenomena that Hemman described and actually much later um, were described by by um, by researchers in 1970. Here's a paper by Steve Link and A. Tyndall. They cite Henman's research and show um, as the size of the difference gets larger, uh, you and then as the uh, a speed you can see a uh, speed actually trade off when you have where um, the size of the difference makes a difference for time when you have an ac a focus of accuracy, but when you have a speed focus, it doesn't. So these are kind of standard speed actually trade-offs that, that um, and the difficulty sort of interacts with those things. So there's an, a number of parameters that you can set, and so I wanted to be able to manipulate speed accuracy in some way, and you can always do this through instruction, and that's what, um, what Lincoln Tyndall did or you can you can manipulate it by post ratings it's like confidence but you can also do it through deadlines um, and so in this task you can have up to five different blocks with different time deadlines and that's what are described um, here in these deadline one through deadline five and um, but if you don't want to use all of them you can specify how many you want to use it'll use them in order and the num blocks tells you which how many of them you want to use. So you can, if you just want one, you can do one, or you want all five, you can do five, and it'll use those. <coughs> you can also specify the length of the lines, and so I guess I was, uh, I said it was 100, it's about 110, so 110 to 120 pixels are the minimum and maximum lengths. And the way it does this is it tries to sample evenly from the different um, differences between lengths in that space. So rather than sampling the the lines uniformly between 100 and 110, it'll say oh, there's a, a difference of between 1 and 10 and on every trial we'll pick one of those differences and then sample values within there uniformly to um, make an equal distribution across differences. So that's what the min and max length will do. Um, and so, obviously, people can, in some conditions, detect 1% differences, but most of the studies, being, dating back to Henman's day, um, sort of are about 5% differences they're looking at, um, and sometimes larger. Um, here we're going to focus on, well, it's essentially 1% to 5%, 1 to 10% differences if you go from 110 to 120. So these are going to be much more difficult than have been, had been studied in the past. Um, there's also a question, one thing that can make it more difficult is if you separate these in space a lot. And um, if they are close together, maybe you can make the judgment easily and you don't have to make an eye movement. But if you make them farther apart, you can't do it without an eye movement. You can't sort of compare them in the same blink of an eye. And um, so uh, the offset tells you how far from the center of the screen each one of those. Uh, so here, an offset of 40 would be 80, roughly 80 pixels apart. Now, I don't have the jitter parameters in here settable, but um, to prevent people from being able to sort of make absolute judgments just by where they appear on the screen, these lines will always appear jittered one, maybe one, up to three or four pixels in each direction, both up and down or left or right. So um, this is going to be the m mean center, but they're going to be offset from that. If you don't want to use a timer, you don't have to. You can set it to zero. Um, 
and you can specify the number of trials per block and we'll set this to something like 10 so we can get through this. We'll set it to 5 so we can go through it quickly. So those are the parameters um, that are available for setting here. And so <coughs> if we run this it'll give basic instructions and this is set up so that after up until the end everything is controlled by just left and right um, shift key. So I hit this here's the instructions. You want to decide which one's longer. Um, Henman actually noted that people were had a little better luck when they tried to decide which one was shorter rather than longer, but that was somehow only partially supported by the data. Okay, so in fact this these are just practice. Those are small and they are large differences are small with small differences. So that's just to get you accustomed to what's going on without actually having data. And then at the beginning of each block, I have four similar practice trials that are automatically put in and they're entered into the data, but you can filter those out if you want to. So here's the real session. Uh, the first four, remember these are practice, and they always go like left, right. Now there's a small difference, right left and this is actually the first real trial so you can see that that's a big difference it's going to try to sample sort of equally between all the different distances and then at the end of the block um, these are not going to be that reliable because I only have five trials it um, gives you a table showing the results so I didn't have any that I missed the deadline the very first block has a 5 or a 10 second deadline. Yeah, a 10 second deadline. So it essentially has no deadline. You could take as long as you want. And here I had 100% accuracy. So um, I was able to do really well, and it was relatively slow, but, you know, 1,200 milliseconds average. Um, so next we have one that has a faster one. And again, these first four are practice just to get you used to the new deadline. You're not told that they're practice, but now these come the real trials. And so even though the deadline was 2000 and it was slower than my average and probably slower than any of my responses, having this 2000 millisecond deadline sped me up a little bit. I did not make any errors, did not happen to make any errors here either. Um, so we'll continue to the next one where it starts getting faster. Again, those are practice, and already I'm making errors. Okay, so now that I have a 1,000 uh, millisecond deadline, that's faster than my average response for the first block. And you can see that accuracy is getting worse, my response time is getting faster. It's still, my response time was still, um, here was still faster than this, but the increased timeline made me want to go even faster, and my accuracy suffers. We have one more block here, I think. Be really fast. And okay, so again, I had 60% accuracy. Overall, my response time was pretty flat with the previous one. I get, um, but that's the end of the task. Um, now, if we look at the data, um, oops. Uh, in the data, every file will be saved. Um, every subject will be saved under their own folder. And uh, this was 72 I just ran and there's a little report at the end which is going to print out that table that we saw. You, and this could be very useful if you do this in a class because you could just have the results here. Um, and here's the trial by trial data. And now again we see these P's. These are the practice trials that you might want to throw out. Um, and they're probably marked with P's here. They're first block, but um, you could easily filter these out by finding the P's and getting rid of them. I've got the actual coordinates 
the links of the two lines, the actual coordinates of them, the xy coordinates so you can know exactly what they look like. Here's something that says, was it too long? Here was the response that was made. Here's whether it was correct, response time, and this is the start time of the trial in absolute time since the beginning of the whole session. So I've also included um, some R code that will uh, let you analyze this all together. I've used prepdat, which will merge all of your data files together. And I've done this a bunch of times, so probably, uh, I don't know how many trials is in here, but if we do in a row dat, there's about 2,000 trials across conditions. Um, probably we, uh, if we want to look at data, we want to maybe get rid of the practice trials. So data, so we could say data trial, not, not equal to P. So that would just filter out all of the practice trials. Uh, and this actually creates the speed actually tr um, functions. So along the bottom is how many pixels they differ by from 1 to 10 on the basis of um, 110 pixels. Here's the response time. And you can see, see that even, this is the four deadlines. This was like no deadline. Um, this is, gets faster and faster and faster. Accuracy doesn't have as big of an effect, um, but, but it still changes. And you can see that this looks basically like the link results. There's some differences. You'll notice that all of these responses were highly practiced people and the differences were large. They were, uh, each one of these deltas was about a 5% difference. So this is 5, 10, 15, 20%. So that would be this point, this point, and then two points further out um, on the deviation scale. And without looking at all these in here, and you can see that <coughs> in the slow case where there was essentially an accuracy you see the same thing here as you all right so um, yeah so we see basically the same effects although um, the timing was a lot faster in this study than in this study the accuracy was maybe on the same scale at least you know we're at 60 percent here we're at 60 percent in this range um, but if, I guess if you push these to large differences, you can compress the 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 uh, threshold. This I think 460 was sort of a um, the deadline in one of these conditions, and you could even go faster as long as you're willing to accept 60 to 70 percent accuracy for something that can get you can get 100 percent at. Um, so a lot of this is is really about um, really trying to to meet that that time threshold um, and it's not a perceptual problem I guess um, so I also plot here for each of the thresholds you can plot um, accuracy versus speed and you can see that um, most of these cases so this is the long threshold versus the th short threshold the main thing that the threshold does is, in in this case is change the overall accuracy. So, um, I'm sorry. So the difference changes the accuracy. The threshold changes the speed. You sort of, except when it's slow, you see a relationship that's going down. But um, what what happens is the threshold changes how long you have to decide, and it's sort of like a stop signal task where you. You just make that decision based on whatever information you have at that point in time. That decision point is, you know, going to be faster than the true threshold. But, but, um, so what? What larger differences do is they impact your accuracy and not your speed. And the threshold maintains your certain speed. Um, all right. Well, that is the Pebble. Uh, 
line judgment task and it's uh, interesting because it shows both things about Weber's law speed and speed actually trade-off it's an implementation of a task that's been around for 160 years at least and um, now we have it on modern systems and modern equipment and you can try it yourself thank you